There's obviously no excuse for how Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart performed in Game 6, given Jalen Brown, Robert Williams III, and the aging veteran Al Horford kept Boston hanging around all game. Bottom line is, I'll be the first one to admit, I was wrong about the Boston Celtics in 2022, as while I predicted they were built for the finals, these two videos claiming they'd win it all didn't age too well. I didn't mean to jinx them, but after predicting the Bucks and Raptors championship in years past, this year's C's were giving me those type of vibes. Ime Udoka's team mightily struggled with controllable elements like reckless turnovers and poor shot selection, but again, I was wrong about my prediction on the Boston Celtics winning it all. This was a missed opportunity for Boston, as a team like my Toronto Raptors is only getting better, and the Eastern Conference will be much tougher next year. With that said, it's clear Tatum and the C's wore themselves down in the second and third round of the playoffs and during two seven-game battles with the Milwaukee Bucks and Miami Heat. What happened to Kobe's prodigy and Jason Tatum, and where does GM Brad Stevens go from here? Stay tuned to find out. Only 13.1% of you watching right now have done this, so for NBA hot takes and breakdowns which you can't miss, subscribe and hit the bell. Congratulations to the Golden State Warriors, who I made a separate video breaking down yesterday, and we'll have more content on in the near future. I want to start this video by saying that Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum maturely addressed the Boston Celtics six-game series loss, a post-game interview I suggest you go check out after this. With that being said, in the most pivotal game of the year for Boston, Marcus and Jason combined for a measly 22 points on 10 for 30 shooting from the field. Meanwhile, Smart and Tatum's running mates in the breakout Robert Williams compiled five blocks and combined with Jalen Brown and Al Horford to give coach Ime Udoka 63 points. Point is, Boston was hanging around all of Thursday night's game, so if Marcus and Jason play up to their capabilities, this would have been a different story. But should all the blame really be placed on those two? I don't think so. Quite frankly, Ime Udoka's offensive scheming was much worse than that of the Warriors coach Steve Kerr. Udoka also failed to make the proper adjustments defensively to Stephen Curry, playing far too much drop coverage and pick and rolls until the chef exploded for 43. That's when Ime finally decided to start blitzing Curry around ball screens. Unfortunately for him, Steph's the master at passing out of that coverage, and Air Canada Andrew Wiggins relieved the pressure. My Raptors whipped out a commonly used high school strategy in the box and one back in 2019's finals, and I genuinely have no idea why Udoka and his coaching staff didn't look back at that film and try to use it on Curry this year. A box and one consists of one defender being glued to the main ball handler and four defenders creating a box around the paint instead of fighting through ball screens and pressing up. Nick Nurse throwing that set at Curry, specifically in game two of the 2019 finals, worked to neutralize him. So again, I was baffled as to why Ime Udoka didn't try it. Maybe someone can explain in the comments why he didn't use the box and one. I know the games played between the lines that goes without saying, and the blame always falls on the players. Having said that, the amount of precision, focus, and motivation a player has within any given season always boils down to the influence of their coach. Just look at Steve Kerr on the other side. I'm not saying Ime didn't accomplish a lot as a rookie head coach, because he won the damn Eastern Conference. But given he was a former player, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it kind of seems like Ime assumes his roster knows the simple things and feels like he doesn't need to constantly remind them of the factors in basketball that may seem obvious but are often forgotten. A great amount of the blame for this Celtic missed opportunity falls on Udoka for being a worse game planner and motivator than Steve Kerr of the Golden State Warriors. But at the end of the day, it's as simple as this. Your best players have to be your best players when it matters most, or you're not going to win the title. Jason Tatum set the NBA record for most turnovers in a single playoff run. The man missed far too many layups, specifically with his offhand, and the 24-year-olds got way too caught up in the officiating. Tatum has to stop looking to the ref on every play and finish through it, and overall, the kid has a lot of improving to do on and off the court. He'd be the first one to tell you that. Looking forward to watching him in person next year when the Celtics come to Toronto. The man's still a box office talent, regardless of what just went down in the finals. Having said that, Jalen Brown took over as this team's number one option with Jason's Game 6 disappearance as JB dropped 34, continuing to look like a hybrid of McGrady and LeBron. 
many casuals are going to forget it, but the Eastern Conference Finals MVP in Tatum had his moments as well, and this young duo proved they're capable of doing significant damage in the Eastern Conference into the near future. My last intention was to give false hope to Celtics Nation with my uploads on them this year, but with a few tweaks from GM Brad Stevens, maybe title number 18 can come in the next few seasons, but again, this felt like a missed opportunity. Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam, and a healthy Fred Van Vliet will be back next year for my Raptors. Chris Middleton's going to be healthy for 2021's champions, and the team that Boston took down in round two in Milwaukee, they're going to be a problem in 2023. Don't get me wrong, this Celtics 2022 playoff run was very impressive for two stars under the age of 25. Boston got through three generational players by first sweeping Kevin Durant, then outdueling Giannis and Jimmy in consecutive seven-game battles. If Boston can take care of business in easier fashion than they did in 2022's second and third round next year, maybe that keeps them more fresh if they get back to the finals. But that's not going to happen if the Celtics get happy about their accomplishments, which they seem to be in 2022's finals. As with Stephen Curry quite literally laying his heart out on the line, Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart may have let their egos get the best of them, quite frankly. These two have to go back to the drawing board and really think about how much this means to them, and not in some corny, media-friendly statement, but genuinely think about what motivates them as basketball players. Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart have all the IQ and talent in the world, but it needs to be displayed more consistently. To look at this from a brighter perspective, with all the improvements that the big three of Brown, Tatum, and Smart have to make, what they provided was still good enough to get two wins away from winning the title. What should be the Celtics' first off-season move? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout-out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout-out to Guerlex and Thierry. Pause to read their takes and the honorable mentions. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.